I'm Simon White, Technical Director at Visu Technologies, and I'd like to introduce you to the Win OLS software, give you a brief guide and tour of some of the key features. The software is open on the screen, and we're just going to go and select a project and select a new file so we can show you how the system interacts with the read from the So now we're going to move forward and we're going to let the system start scanning for the files, scanning for maps that it sees within the data. You can see down here in the bottom left hand corner that the WinOLS software is trying to detect any maps that it can find in there itself. Again, we take you through this during the training course of how you differentiate between the different ECUs and some of the key tips and features as to what to select in the settings so you get as much information pulled back as possible. You can see on the screen now we've got 184 potential maps detected. Now in reality this ECU may have a few thousand maps inside itself, everything from a 1x1 to a 20x20. What the system's done is detected what it thinks from the settings we've put in there, algorithmically and statistically, what it thinks should be mapped within the ECU data. Doesn't mean all of them are correct, more often than not it's just a guide to try and get you to some of those map locations or something that it feels is right. The system looks overwhelming to start with, but please trust me, it's really straightforward. Once you've had some basic training with us, we can take you through the step-by-step -step process on how to use it and get the most out of it. So typically the next process you'll go through on here is, as you can see on the screen, we've put the preview up so we can actually check the 2D and the three-dimensional at the same time, making better use of our time and of the software to sort of sanity check some of the maps that are being found on there. It's so always important to just sort of visually check your eye over it and make sure everything's in order and you've got everything you want from a tuning point of view. With the training in mind, we take you through this step by step, the things to look out for on the maps. What is a good map? What is a bad map? What isn't a map we want for tuning? There are thousands of maps in the ECU. It doesn't mean you need to tune a thousand maps. More often than not, it could be 20 to 30 maps that you need for tuning. Some ECUs, it's even less. The simpler the engine, the less there is to tune in many cases. The methodology that we employ is that as we're going through the maps and we've sanity checked and decided, yep, this is something I want, I've found the extra ones that are missing, we'll just get rid of the flag at the side. It just makes it a little bit easier in future if we look through the um, predefined maps again or potential maps again, that we're not suddenly going, oh, here's one I need to add back in and end up with multiples of the same map. So once we've got it into my maps, I'm happy with it, we'll turn the flag off so we don't run that filter again for it. Now, a little bit of a sneaky peek at some of the tuning that you'll need to do and we'll go through during our training course. The priority of maps that you need to look at. Everyone assumes with a car where it's turbo or natural aspirated, it's about getting the power straight away. Spark advance on a petrol, put more fuel in. A diesel, I need to wind the boost up. Petrol turbo, same thing. That's not the case. More often than not, there's little tricks and tips we can give you within the standard ECU that show you how much extra power can be given from the vehicle without having to overstress the engine. A good tune is a safe tune on the car, which is why this is one of the first maps we always start with. This is known as the driver's wish, torque request, driver's demand, however you want to call it, this is the map that directly relates between RPM and an input, typically throttle or a load on the vehicle. The map itself is the request on the engine. This old ECU is actually fuel-based. Being an old TDI PD engine, it requests a quantity of fuel under a certain load or throttle, and a certain RPM. This is the link directly between you as the driver, or the customer of the car, and the actual software and engine. You press your pedal so far at a certain RPM and it will request an amount of fuel. Very important you understand what the car is being asked to do. Now you'll see on the screen now we're putting some basic information in for the ECU. We're giving it its driver's wish name, the actual measurement in the map itself is fuel quantity, and you can see we put milligrams per cycle. You're not restricted to these predefined fields, remember. You can put in anything you want in there as long as it makes sense for you and you're going to use that uniformly moving forward. You can see on there as well, a little freebie on there, we've shown you the conversion. Taking the raw data that's set on there 6,118 and putting that decimal place in the right place so it shows us 61.18 milligrams of fuel. Very important that we understand the data that's there. If we misinterpret that as a boost pressure or as a uh, a fuel pressure or as a torque amount, we could very badly tune the engine. Tuning the wrong areas, the wrong places, the wrong amounts. So it's important that we look at the data and understand what's there. This is what we take you through with our training. Whether it's on Skype or in-house, or actual one-to-one -one training sessions, we'll show you how to understand this data, how to interpolate it in the correct way, how to put the correct conversions, or known in the industry, factors onto the data so it makes sense to you from a tuning point of view. 
There's a number of shortcuts as well that we can show you into the system. One of which on the E-Series, when you're putting this bit of data into there, you can add it to a personal profile for that ECU. What that lets you do is in the future, quickly hop back into the map. If you think it's fuel quantity or it's torque or it's boost pressure, you can hit a little drop down arrow in the corner, you'll see them on the maps in a moment, and you can quickly copy that conversion. You haven't got to remember it all in your head. You haven't got to have reams of paper with everything written down on. The database within Winol's system itself stores that information for you. It makes life a hell of a lot easier and helps increase the sort of efficiency when it comes to tuning a vehicle. Instead of taking six hours to tune one, take you an hour. Do a little bit more, take you 30 minutes. We typically turn a tuning file around in around about 20 minutes to 25, depending on the complexity of the ECU. We'll now look at some of the basic ways that you can modify the data on the ECU. This isn't every single way, but it highlights some of the ways that you can make changes. We're going to show you the 3D way. Very quick and easy way of making modifications. We'll select an area of the map, literally using the mouse and the left click, we'll drag over where we want to modify. Very simply then you'll see the cursor change to a plus minus and we can drag the values up or down. It's not an accurate way of doing it but visually it's an easy way of making the change. We're going to hit yes at the top because we want to make these changes and we're basically saying to the software look I'm safe, I'm sure, I know I want to make this change. The software tries to protect you from making a mistake or accidentally increasing a value without realizing. So you can see on the screen we've raised it up by a certain amount, start from around about 1500 RPM, and we're going to increase them moving along periodically to try and create a nice smooth curve. Where the factory map came up, momentarily dropped and then carried on, we're trying to iron that out. Now this isn't a tune for maximum power or maximum efficiency on the vehicle, it's just highlighting one of the ways, one of the many ways in WinOS that you can make modifications to the vehicle. When we've made the changes in the 3D, we can sanity check what we've done percentage-wise, either hover over one of the single points to see the RPM and the, and the change we've made, or an easier way, once we're happy with it, we go back to the text table and we can click a few of the different buttons on there, percentage and delta, to see those changes. So we bring the map into view, the area, and we go to the top of the screen and we'll press the percentage button and we can see what that actual change means as a percentage. And we can change by an absolute, actually edit the value. In this case, we're going to set it on the screen to 80 milligrams of fuel. It's not a good tune, but it's just to highlight how we make the changes. Sanity check your work again in the 3D. With the data back as original, we're going to show one of the other ways, one of the more complex ways of making changes to the ECU. This way now we're going to change by edit, and we can manipulate the different corners of the area we've selected, so we can scale, sometimes called interpolation. We can put a smaller value at the start and a higher value further along to give ourselves a scaled progressive increase on there instead of just a flat numeric or percentage increase. 1500 RPM to peak to us, like optimum torque at 3000, we scaled 8% and above, and now we're going to reverse that the other way. This way we're going to build up to optimum torque and then a nice progressive drop down again. We check in the three dimensional, we can see we've not upset the curve. We're maintaining the factory curve, we're just moving the torque, instead of peaking around sort of 1900 to 2000, we're trying to keep it accelerating further up towards 3000 RPM. And again, we have the ability in the 3D, if we're not happy with something, or there's a little bit of a spike, sometimes easier with the, the 3D visual, to make a little change on there. Always make sure you use all the tools in your repertoire to make sure the tune is how you want it to be. Most importantly, you're tuning for the customer, not just for what you want, but what the customer's looking for on there. Computers can be funny things at times and temperamental, so periodically save your work. You'll only be asked to save it as a new version when you've physically made changes in terms of adding something onto fuel or boost, etc., when you've modified the data. Changing the filters or the factors or map names doesn't edit the data itself, just the filter that you're looking through. So now we've got a modification, we've saved it as a new version, we're now going to export that file. So once everything's all done with your tuning, you want to export. The typical way you'll do this is through binary file at the top there. There are a number of options in here, but binary file is what you need to get the file out there so you can write it to a vehicle or send to your customer to write to a vehicle. The OLS function for the current project or OLS function for all project versions or files within that project is so you can send, okay, I want to send my file to Bob the tuner. You send it to Bob, your OLS project, he can see all of the maps that you've created on there, can see the data for the file itself and can actually understand what you've been doing. So, for example, when you've done the training, you want some sanity checking, you've left the training, you come back and you go, I've tried to make this file, I'm not sure if I've missed everything. 
send it through to us. Send us the OLS version and we can see your project and everything you've done in there. That way we can help and can correct anything that you need within the file. Many thanks for your time in watching this video and we hope it's been informative for you.